Sometimes, despite everything, they still get through. Homegrown extremists who have made terrorism a fact of life. This is the story of the men and women charged with stopping it. We don't know their names, we don't really know what they're doing, but they are among us every minute of every day. It's daybreak, somewhere near Birmingham. No sirens, no fuss. This is the part of policing we never see. At the door, please. At the door. Mm -hmm. Only the parents are in. An hour later, the man they want strolls home. They suspect he's a member of the banned far-right group National Action. Provisions you've been arrested yeah. under on suspicion of being a terrorist. Yeah, it's madness. Which it's is... It's nuts. It's absolutely nuts. OK, is there a password or a pin code for that phone? Um. OK, and obviously you've got some phones in your bedroom. Are they ones that you use as well? His possessions and phones are then bagged up. Every message he has sent will be read. It's the start of a legal process that will determine his innocence or guilt. Okay. Okay. This officer's going to take hold of your arm, all right? Yes, I'm okay. right. There's now nothing unusual in far-right extremism jobs for the West Midlands Counterterrorism Unit. So this is your armoury? So this is the armoury where weapons which have been seized will be stored securely. Previous investigations have yielded an extraordinary collection. This is just part of it. This is a, a sample of weapons that have been recovered over the past uh, two years from a variety of investigations within the West Midlands. So this is a homemade? This is a homemade mace. Uh, yeah. You know, very heavy, very dangerous. It looks medieval. Uh, and clearly based on, on some sort of old types of weapons, but in, in the wrong hands would cause significant harm and injury to, to anybody that was used against. Lots of their mindset is around preparing for a future race war that may or may never come, but they want to be equipped to be able to, to be as armed as they can for that. Does it ever surprise you what you find in people's yeah. homes? Unfortunately, not anymore. And this is from another Islamist investigation? That yes, you've had. Th this was from an investigation involving uh, a, a husband, his wife and his sister. Uh, they were again plotting to carry out attacks on uh, people within the West Midlands. The sort of Daesh, Al Qaeda inspired plots will still make up the majority of our work. Probably about 80% of what we do continues to relate to these uh, uh, threats to the West Midlands. Uh, but the extreme right wings probably makes up almost a fifth of what we do at the moment. So quite a significant proportion and continuing to grow. Is it the fastest growing sector of your work? Uh, it is certainly over the past two years. It's, it's the, the one area where we have seen more activity taking place. Nationally, more white people are now being arrested for terrorism than those from Asian backgrounds. <laughs> Birmingham Airport. 13 million passengers a year and a team of counter-terrorism suits who never talk publicly about what they do. Until now. It's just a fact that terrorists live, work and travel in the same places we all use. Picking them out of a crowd is a 24-7 operation. So, for example, I would stop this car eventually. Sunglasses on, he's looking very walking very quickly. He's very... coat on inside, he just... There would be personal assumptions that some of that would be profiling of people, ethnic groups or whatever it is. What's the reality? That, that, that is an assumption what we sometimes hear, but equally we're dealing with people from um, different backgrounds, different religions, different uh, ethnicities. It's a wide range of people we deal with here at the airport. Ultimately we look at what um, the threat picture is here to the UK and we use that to help us assist in uh, working out who we need to speak to. It's the conversations that follow that are the most productive tactic. 
What, what is the, 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 the political situation in, in Somalia at the moment? Is it something as a young man that you've taken? Oh, I don't even know. <laughs> you don't, you don't look at it at all? The that. parents don't uh, talk to you about it or anything? No, I've got bigger problems than that, man. Have you? Yeah. yeah man. That young gentleman was travelling uh, out to Prague for a few days, travelling alone. Uh, from his passport, a clock that he was uh, actually born in Mogadishu, Mogadishu being the, uh, the city of, in uh, Somalia, which is a, a country of interest to the British authorities. Um, obviously, problems are still ongoing there with terrorist groups such as the Al Shabaab. Do you just get a sense sometimes that something's wrong? Uh, yeah, so some of his behaviour might be wrong. It might be their body language, it might be the um, the, the way they talk to us in, in that they're nervous and uh, they might kind of contradict themselves about how long they're going for, where they're staying, who they're staying with, etc. Flights in and out of the Middle East are of course of more interest to the officers than a shuttle service to Aberdeen. But the rise in activity among far-right extremists means that sometimes flights to Eastern and Central Europe are just as closely watched. Nearly everyone who works at Birmingham Airport, whether they're serving coffee or signing out hire cars, is trained in spotting the signs. We're constantly um, looking out, really, for anything that's suspicious. You do it every day, really, without knowing, really, but at the same time, keeping that balance between um, looking out for it as well as keeping it safe and happy environment for all. Is it OK if I run the dog in the yeah, cases? Thank you. And then there's Spencer. Certainly as we walk, walk through the airport before, um, people will try and avoid the dog. That will obviously start alarm bells ringing for us and we need to obviously check out those people further. So what do they do? Uh, in general, you'll find that people will rush to the toilets <laughs> to avoid the dog or certainly move quickly as possible away from the dog. Good. That's lovely. Thank you very much. It then falls to this man's team to step in. He oversees counter-terrorism at Birmingham Airport. For me, a uh, criminal's a criminal, uh, crime's a crime, um, but there's obviously a sliding scale of that, and terrorism sits very much towards the top end of that scale, of course. You're talking to your family away from work about how you and your colleagues protect us all. What do you tell them? When I talk to my family, it would be the same I would talk about to any other member of the public. It's just about being aware, raise awareness, be vigilant. Um, and don't be afraid to, if there is any doubt, there is no doubt. This is uh, a threat that's been around for a long time, um, um, but by no means should it impact upon your day-to-day -day living. They now know that some terrorists have actively avoided this airport because they're wary they'll be stopped. We uh, want to make Birmingham Airport as hard a target as possible for anyone who wants to uh, come here uh, for the purpose other than uh, travelling or collecting somebody. Of course, it doesn't always work. At the end of last year, MI5 conceded that chances had been missed to stop Salman Abedi, the Manchester Arena bomber. The Parsons Green bomber, Ahmed Hassan, wasn't monitored properly. And there are many other suspects who are arrested their lives turned upside down and then never charged. I think we still make mistakes. I, I think we still get many things wrong. But we're, we're, we're open enough to admit when we made mistakes and, and we learn from them. Uh, the attacks in 2017 uh, were, 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 were tragedies which affected many families across the country. How does that feel when attacks get through? Uh, it means we need to work harder next time. It means we need, to, we need to do more next time. Let's go up to Birmingham now. Let's go to Becky Johnson, who's in Birmingham. The police have sealed off an area of Birmingham. There have been searches at two further addresses, including a tower block not far from here. There is something of an inescapable truth in our second city. It's seen one of the highest numbers of arrests, charges and raids anywhere in Europe. I've lived and worked in Birmingham for, for almost 25 years. I wouldn't want to live or work anywhere else. I think it's a fantastic city, and I think the work we can do as counterterrorism and policing will help to keep it that way. But it has had a very highly significant proportion of Islamist and now far-right activity, hasn't it? I, I think we've seen individuals and groups sort of developing within Birmingham. What I'll also say, we've also seen lots of information and intelligence coming from our communities. You know, we, 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 I think we get some of the most highest level of support from many communities within the country here, here in Birmingham, and I'm really proud of that. 
Everyone knows the pressure on police budgets particularly. Is counter-terrorism immune from that? Does it affect you and the work that you can do? I think anything that puts pressure on neighbourhood policing is going to, to impede our ability to, to keep communities safe from terrorism. It's fine. They need the support of all kinds of colleagues. The security services, the government and us, the public. We are now arguably an angrier and more unstable country. Inside counter-terrorism, complacency is never an option.